Hey everybody, it is Mr. George and tonight's class is Tuesday, May 5th. Um, here is the agenda for tonight. So tonight we are going to read a story about Pat Hayes, who is a retired police officer. Um, after you listen to me read the story, I'm going to ask you to read the story independently. And then I would like you to try to complete the assignment uh, where you will identify 10 vocabulary words, use them in sentences, answer the question, what is the main idea, provide two to three questions that you would ask Pat if you, if you could. And remember the link right here for completed assignment, you click on that, it will actually give you an example of a completed assignment as well. Um, so remember, during class time, I will be available through Google Voice uh, to answer any questions you might have, and you can also email me directly. All right, so I'm going to start the story in a minute. Um, after we finish the story, after you complete the assignment, uh, the best way for you to complete it is to create a Google Doc and then share that with me. That way I can, I can make changes to it and send you some feedback send you some comments and suggestions back. Um, if you can't do that, then you can just write it and take pictures like some of you have been doing each week. Um, the last couple weeks, we've been looking at the online resources that are available to you. I'm leaving them down at the bottom of the agenda with the YouTube videos that I created for each one of these free resources, the vocabulary.com, the virtual field trip, the museums from around the world, and then we have the uh, math skills website, the aaamath.com, which also has the links on that site to the geography. So whether it's in the United States or whether it's in certain uh, countries around the world or certain regions around the world. So we've already looked at North America, Central America, South America, we've looked at Africa, we've looked at Europe. So uh, again, these are these are free resources for you to help your, not just your geography skills, but also your reading skills. And then the last section that's free is that photo section. So you can click on this link right here and it will give you about 30 pictures of some significant place in the world. And you can look at the pictures and you can read the captions or the words underneath those pictures. So I would encourage you to spend maybe 20-25 minutes after you send me the assignment tonight to just kind of review these different resources that are available available to you. And again you can always contact me if you do have any questions. Great, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the story. Now, this is a story from our book that we've been reading in class, uh, the Collings book, but this is, not, um, this is not contained within the student binder. So I've also um, attached a copy of this to Google Classroom, uh, as well as my website, as well as to the email. Uh, so this would be the only place that you can actually get the get the story. You don't have this story in your student handbook. All right, so I am going to begin. Policewoman Pat Hayes, 74. So this just indicates that she presently at this time was 74 years old when she did this interview. When I was a kid, I was very, very shy. My dad used to come home drunk and just hit me. So I taught myself to read when I was four because I was the quietest when I was reading and less likely to get hit that way. And so I read a lot. My whole life was the books that I read. I left home at 17 and I married my high school sweetheart. Well, my sort of sweetheart. My mother loved him. Every time I wanted to break up with him and date other guys, 
just to see if there were any interesting ones out there. My mother would lay on this guilt trip. Oh, he loves you so much. I went, oh, all right, mom. I dropped out of high school to marry him, and I got pregnant within the month. So I went from my father's home to my husband's home, and I had my daughter 10 months later. My husband wasn't working, so I went out and got a job working the switchboard at a hospital. And when I brought home my check, he was like, give me the money. I was like, it's my money. I earned it. Unfortunately, he felt that it was okay for him to conclude arguments by hitting me. So, of course, he did. But I was not going to repeat my mother's life and told him, I'm not going to take this. I called the police and that was it. I worked the switchboard for a few more years. Then one day, when I was about 24, my friend told me she was going to take the Chicago policewoman's exam. They were revamping the department, and as a consequence of that, they had formed a new unit for policewomen. And so I said, well, I'll go with you and take it too. Over a thousand women took that test, and from that, 219 names were posted, and we got the call to show up. I just barely passed the physical requirements of height and weight. You had to be five foot three, and you had to be over 110 pounds. But I was only about five foot one. I had a crick in my neck the whole day from looking up to make conversation with people. I mean, these women were huge, but the guy who was measuring us just told me, stand on your toes, and he passed me. I had no experience whatsoever, and I never really wanted to be a policewoman, but I guess I'm stubborn. I was just like, I'm going to finish this academy if it kills me. I was in the class of 35 women who came on the job in 1966. Our uniform was a navy skirt with a little box jacket and this ridiculous hat that was shaped like a sugar scoop. It didn't matter how many bobby pins you used, the damn hat would lift up in the wind and go trailing down the street. So you get a choice of losing your prisoner or losing your hat. Well, the hats were a one-of-a-kind deal. You couldn't find one to replace the hat that belonged to you. So, of course, we held on to the hat. We could always get the prisoner later. As policewomen, our duties were mostly in youth division family investigations of abuse or neglect, or with a woman victim or offender, homicides and sex crimes. We would do on the street arrests of truants and school absentees and curfew violators. If they found a lost child, then they would call the woman in because the men really didn't want to deal with the children anyway. I was assigned to what was believed to be the worst area, which was Maxwell Street. We would get runaways every day with allegations of neglect or abuse. And of course, when we found them, we would have to do a certain amount of counseling that was an interest of mine, especially coming from a dysfunctional family. I wanted to be somebody who was warm and who you could sit and feel comfortable talking to. You know, 
I was dressed for the role as an authority figure. You're wearing the uniform, you've got that big star on your chest, and you've got the gun on. And there's a certain power that comes along with that costume. But I also had to find a way to get past the star in the uniform and all of that to communicate what can we do here. And so my background came in really handy because I could say, you know, I didn't just read this in a textbook. I lived it. I had a father like yours. So right now is the time when you should be saving your birthday money and your babysitting money so that you'll be able to get out on your own. If I could do it, they could do it. But there were a lot of situations where you don't know what to say. I had a rape victim once and she really did not want to talk to anybody. But they knew I was good at talking to victims, so they called me. It was tough going. I felt so bad for her, and I wished there was something I could do. And then I went to run my fingers through my hair, and as I did, the shirt of my uniform ripped, and my whole elbow popped out, and we just both started laughing. Then that turned into tears, and I just held her, and she cried, and she cried, and she cried. A little bit of care and concern, that's about all you had to offer. Whatever they were confronting, the fact that you were willing to listen and try to offer them some comfort, even if it's saying, I really admire the strength of character you need to be able to deal with this situation. They felt better. I bounced around to different assignments and I was a detective twice, first in vice, then in the rape unit. And there was always this implicit, you must be screwing somebody to get a good job like this. But that wasn't true. It never was true. I didn't want my daughters to join the force because I didn't want them to have to put up with the things that I did or see the things that I saw. And I really didn't want them to see the world from that point of view. You know, this job has got a really high divorce rate. By the time the 35 of us policewomen were on the job 10 years, I would say that probably every single one of us had divorced. It's very hard on marriages because saying, I'm going to put you in prison for 10 years for rape, then going home and telling my husband, what would you like for dinner, dear? It just doesn't go well. I retired in 2001, but in the 34 years I was on the force, it wasn't all adversity or I would have been really stupid to have kept that job. It's kind of a calling. I really enjoyed helping people. I would have done it forever. I used to always work New Year's Eve because I don't like New Year's Eve. My birthday is on January 2nd, so I get a year older and I lose a year all at the same time. Well, I was working at one year and I got a call and this woman's voice said, Miss Hayes, you probably don't remember me, but you talked me but you talked to me years ago, and I just wanted you to know that I straightened my life out. And now I have a two-year-old daughter, and I'm so glad that I talked to you. And I thought, boy, that's really God's blessing, because most cops are cops forever, and nobody ever tells them things like that. The police department is not big on telling you that you did a good job, did a job well. Your sergeants are not going to tell you how great you are. It's just not the nature of the job. So you have to be able to go home knowing you helped somebody along the way, even if it's sometimes you can't change the outcome. It may not have been all that I would like it like for it to be, but I think I did some good. This was recorded in Chicago, Illinois on February 4th, 2015. Alright, thanks for watching.